kind okay we we transposed cool oh yeah i'm not supposed to do this am i I guess I'm not supposed to do that. That's okay. It's okay. What's up, guys? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Wow, what a move. H5? What's, what's the idea? I don't see it. I don't see it. Looks like a free pawn to me. E4. Okay. Why do I feel like I'm about to be in trouble? Let's play D3. Let's get the bishop out. E I have no idea what's going on. What is this? He wants to take the knight, but I'm just gonna go here, I guess. And then I'm gonna play knight f3 if this happens. Oh, bishop. I'm like not expecting any of these moves. C, is that a threat? If I play f3? Probably not a good threat. So I guess let's do this. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Maybe it is because then let's see. The queen's hanging, right? Is that the idea? Okay, I guess I have to take this way then. I didn't want to do that, but oh well. This is such a weird game. Okay, so we can take this, but then we lose this, and we lose our rook. Most likely, no, we don't have to lose our rook. We can just go here. Or what's another move? I don't really have a lot of good moves. I guess let's just take it. Three, four, five, three, four, five, six. I'm I'm up a pawn. Yeah. Okay. And my queen's pinned, so we can't do that. I guess we have to go here. Threatens this at least. Knight f3, I'm losing this. Okay, what can I play? I need a good move. Let's do this and take the pawn, I guess. Try not to get mated. Oh, he's gonna go that way. I think this is a bad position. Let's get this bishop out. And try not to get mated. Get the rook over here. that oops oops oh my just getting destroyed here okay well what's up Matt 
You just wait for my rela relaxing streams every day. Awesome. Sorry, I don't stream too much these days. You didn't know I streamed. Yeah, it's not really a new thing. I did it in the past more often, but lately I've just been focusing on making videos when I have time. But yeah, I, I like to from time to time. Um, I'm analyzing games primarily though. If someone wants to, or if someone has a game that you played and you had like a certain moment where you had questions, Yeah, yeah, I'm analyzing games. I just wanted to play till people joined, but if you have a game, um, let me know. You can send it on chess.com. You can message me a link to it. If you're a, a member or a patron or a super chatter, you get priority. So I'll be looking for that. Just let me know if I if I miss it. And I don't think I'm supposed to play bishop c4 here because this trick. That was a just a bad start to the game. It's a really bad start to the game. Let's see how I think it's let's see how bad it actually is. Oh, it's not as bad as I th thought it was. But I have to play queen h5. 96 Okay, uh, it's an interesting line. And then just trade everything and then move this somewhere. Okay. Sixty-five people watching and only five likes. Yeah, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Like that stream. Come on. You gotta play the you gotta play the YouTube game. Play the YouTube game. Um Let's see. Nobody has sent me a game, so I'm gonna play some more until somebody sends me a game. How do you get your game analyzed? Just just send me a link on chess chess.com. Just send me a link to your game. And I'll pull it up. And while I'm waiting, let's go play another game, because that one was pretty bad. Let's play another one. But yeah, I'll analyze as soon as as soon as I get some games. Let's let's do the King's Indian. Let's let's go for the King's Indian. Okay, h3, I think they're gonna play g4. Oh, what is this, what am I supposed to do here? I think I can still play knight a6. Weird, with bishop g5, I didn't think that was, I thought it was like, the point was to play this, try to attack over here, I'm not sure what's happening with bishop g5. And h3. Okay, so the normal thing is to play something like e5. Let's play c6 first, because I don't want to get into trouble with like some sort of weird pin. Now we can play e5. You posted yours in chat. Uh, Robert, I don't think it lets you post links. So you'll have to send it to me. Um, just message me on chess.com. I believe that's why I don't see it. I don't think it lets you post any links. It's kind of risky to let chat post links these days. Okay, so let's see. I have to get out of this pin at some point. Maybe now is a good time. Watch out for this move. Oh, there it is. Okay, so. All 
probably could have went there first. Right, so here's the attack. Okay, so let's do some stuff over here on the queen side. I guess he's planning to just leave the king in the center. Wonder if we can infiltrate somehow over here. Oh, that was a good move, actually. I didn't see that. He's gonna probably move his knight here, and I'm gonna have to go back, I guess. Lead chess game not exit. No, you can send lead chess games. Just just message it to me on chess.com if you can. Or you can do it on lead chess too, I guess. All right, so we gotta move the queen. And then I don't really know what's happening. I guess we have to do try to do something here. I'm gonna lose this pawn, which is not ideal. Oops, there goes a piece. Well, I'll take it, but it wasn't pretty wasn't pretty all right I'm guesstimating we have some games now give me a second guys okay and by the way if you are a channel member or patron let me know I know Robert is Robert, did you email me your game? Let me see, or send me the game and... In, in uh, chess.com messaging, let's see. I don't see Robert's. TMM. Let's see TMM's game. Let's see this one. T 
TMM. Alright, let's flip the board. TMM is black. Here we go. I'm actually going to turn these off for right now. Okay. Oh, queen h5. Wow. Alright. Great move. Always, always attack that queen when it comes out like that. Okay, that's fine. Personally, I would have taken it with the knight because I'm attacking the queen again. And I'm not messing up my pawn structure. So now you have doubled pawns. So just a small thing to keep in mind, but that's what I would have done. Ooh, bad choice. Okay, this is okay. Um, as long as you saw that you were giving up this pawn and you had the, the idea to play bishop c6 next, that's not a terrible idea. Probably a little bit better just to bring this knight out. Because this is like the ideal square for the knight and you just have a chance to put it there right away you don't even give white anything they don't even get a pawn this is okay because you do get some tempos this bishop is maybe not the best diagonal for or this diagonal is maybe not the best for this bishop because the pawn but it's it's okay but i think i would have played knight c6 all right you did see bishop c6 so that's good Okay, great move. You're developing, getting your bishop out. Bishop d5. Yeah, that's fine. You can also have just defended maybe with like queen d7, but this is okay. I mean, you're ahead. Development, so I guess that's fine. Yep, good. Yeah, good. Oh. Castle's good. Yeah, I was thinking rook b8, but then it looks like you lose the rook to this check. So that was a good move, castling. Yeah. It's good. You're doing great. Like when they bring the queen out, this is exactly what you want to do. Just use your pieces to harass it. I really, I really like, I really like this. Okay, so here. It's it's a good idea. You're you're going for the bishop, but tactically it just I don't think it quite works. And it's for two reasons. Number one, well, the primary reason is that it's pinned. So you can't actually take or you lose your rook. But also you have to keep in mind that like, just generally speaking, if you play a move like this and your opponent has a pawn that's gonna capture two pieces and you're only gonna get one, it's not gonna end well for you. Now in this case, it's kind of weird because you got the attack on the queen, but at the end of the day, that the pin is why it doesn't work. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think you just retreat the bishop is probably what I would play here. Just go back. Because this is already defended. Fine. So you don't actually need the bishop there. So you just want to get away from the pawn. Yeah. But even, I mean, even this position is not terrible for you because white's pieces are all like back here. So you're, you're still doing fine. Like even being down a piece, this is fine. Okay, um, hmm. It's a tricky move. I guess it works. I was probably gonna just take this, but okay, I mean, I like what you're doing. Counter attacking, now you take it back, fine. Okay. I think I would have maybe played Rook here. This is a weird position, by the way. Like, this is a very weird position. The pawns are like blocking up all the pieces, so it's kind of funky but rook d3 i like here because you're not giving white the chance to ever really get this bishop out when you can blockade a center pawn like this it's really bad for for white because the bishop is stuck and if the bishop's stuck the rook is stuck and so i just like putting my rook there that being said i don't know that d3 is that good of a move for white anyway but okay yeah see here at least the bishop is now getting into the game if your rook was there that that wouldn't even be legal move for white right but still this is this looks like pretty good for you it's like white's king is going to be in trouble queen f3 oh oh yeah okay yeah that's a tricky one to see because you're focused on like all the stuff happening here and you just didn't see the the queen um how long was this game yeah this game's long enough you, sh you have time to do a blunder check so what i recommend is um 
you know, after every move, just very quickly, like glance at your king and your queen and your major pieces. Like, is, is it attacking any of those? Like, is this a threat? No, I'm not worried because my king, okay. Is the, oh yeah, my queen, right? So yeah, just, just work on your blunder checks and uh, that would have saved you. And I'm guessing that it didn't end well after here, although you do have some, wow. You have some counterplay with the uh oh you got the draw okay well hey that was a, a good way to save the save the game uh considering the queen blunder so not a bad outcome all right let me let me read some chat for a moment do i have a baby registry up someplace good question robert i don't right now but um I didn't even think about doing that. I guess it was like, it was more pressing when it was our first kid and now we're on baby number three. It's kind of like, we feel like we have, you know, most of what we need. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk to my wife about that. Tom O'Pawn. Okay, Robert's next because he's a, he's a patron. So Tom O'Pawn. All right, cool. Okay, Robert, I'm gonna do yours next. Let's go here, actually. And let me switch this real quick. All right. And you are white, okay, cool. Okay, so we got the what, Italian game. Yeah, I think this is okay. D4. So, not a bad move. Like, I mean, this is definitely what you want to do. Like, strike at the center, get ready to develop. But whenever your king, your opponent's king is on the E-file and your castle and you have a rook ready to go, you want to be looking at this kind of stuff. And so... It looks like knight takes e5 is a really good idea because you've got this and then probably d4 now and you're threatening a fork so black can't just castle i guess they gotta like move i don't know something like this and then you take and now the knight's gotta move and you might be able to consider e6 or even just taking here and i think black's like already losing and I mean, really, it was a simple idea. It was just like, hey, the king's in the center. I'm going to bring my rook over. Or first, take. Because if you, if you go here, I guess, e4, you can still play d3, and I think you're still doing pretty well, putting a lot of pressure. And black has to be super careful because of where the king is. Because if you ever get a rook lined up on the king, like, it's bad news. So I think, yeah, just just pay attention to this kind of stuff. This These tactics are, like, very common. And a lot of times, you will have to sacrifice a piece temporarily but if you can get a pin with your rook and you have pawns to follow it up you're always going to be able to get your piece back you're not actually in danger of losing your piece you know as long as you can get the pin so um keep that in mind but other otherwise you know d4 is not bad okay knight g5 knight g5 i, I feel like i would have played here only because knight g5 you have to ask yourself what's going to happen if they just chase it away, right? This is a very common idea, and you got to have a good plan. Unless you were planning on sacking here, but I don't think you have a follow-up. This is already defended, and so you're probably going to have to go back to h3, which means your your king is going to be in trouble, right? So try to just look a ahead a little bit more, uh, especially with knights. When you advance your knights forward, you kind of have to have a good plan for what's going to happen to them because knights are one of the easiest pieces that can get trapped if you're not careful so i'm guessing oh they didn't play h6 okay that's good for you now rookie one yeah see now it's not as good of a move because this is already sort of solidified for black right it, it's going to take you a little while to break this down and black has time to play bishop e7 and castle pretty easily whereas earlier they, they didn't have time for that so that's why okay bishop b4 F3, yeah, it's a good idea. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that. Castles, right? So you take this. 
And you do have to watch out for this pawn, but you could probably play d5 first. Okay, so, um, I was thinking d5 because I didn't want to let black just take this. Stockfish is telling me I'm, I'm crazy. I don't know why. Bishop g4. Wow. So this is, yeah, I mean, this is a crazy position, apparently. There's a lot happening, and d5 is not good. But generally speaking, I would just like to throw in this move and then take this, because now my pawn's going to be defended. I'm not losing a pawn. Whereas, if you take I think you're just losing the pawn. Oh, they didn't take it. What happens if this? This is what I was thinking. Yeah, this is kind of what I, I guess. I guess it's not terrible for you because you get the pawn structure. Okay. So, I mean, both of those moves are fine. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, that's pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess you kind of have to do that. Um... Normally, normally I don't like to um, trade into my opponent when there's an open file like this because you're always going to be losing control of the file, right? Like now, black has, has complete control. But in this case, it's kind of a weird situation where you don't really have too many other options because it's attacked and you can't move it away. And I mean, you can go back, but yeah, in this case, I think it's fine. I will say you have to make sure that you calculate that you have a good way to prevent the rook from infiltrating and regain control of the file at some point in this case you do like you can just play king f2 very easily um and then you know move your bishop bring your rook over and you should be fine so in this case i think it's fine bishop a3 okay um fine you just have to make sure you calculate what happens if the rook invades i guess you can just simply play king over yeah, this is what I would be concerned about. Is that what your opponent played? No, they didn't. So this is what I'm concerned with. They're going to play here. And even if you play king f1, they might play like here. And you can't go here because you're losing your pawn. And now you're kind of in a jam, I think, with your king. You have to be really careful because if this knight can, can loop around somehow, which it can't easily in this position. So I, maybe it's fine, but you have to be careful. Like even bishop here. I don't like allowing this when I'm playing because... It, very very difficult to play this way stockfish is saying it's fine oh because you have the back rank mate all right so in this case it's fine you can go here threaten mate they have to like do something and then i guess you can play like rook oh bishop c1 and you trap the rook wow okay yeah I'm, i wasn't even seeing any of that all right so there's that tactic available but generally speaking most of the time you got to watch out for this rook infiltrating on the second rank uh, but in this case you had some nice tactics so i don't know if you saw that or not but it worked out for you okay so knight a5 rook f1 okay so pushing past pawns is usually a good thing you just have to be a little bit careful that it doesn't become a target uh, because like right here this guy is super solid this pawn is not going anywhere and so if you're able to like trade off all the pieces it's just this is going to be you know probably an easy winning uh, king and pawn end game if you push it too fast you do have to be careful now i think you're fine but this is my concern with with these moves so rapidly um now we're in an opposite colored bishop. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think you played pretty well. Um, biggest takeaway from that game was the the e-file early on. Don't be afraid to sacrifice a piece if you can get your opponent's king. Um, that would be the big takeaway. Okay. You were thinking you could bring from h3 to eight. yeah okay yeah no problem robert all right let's see let me um let 
Will I be putting this on my YouTube channel? Yes, yeah. So usually when I live stream, they always end up on YouTube. You can go to, I think you have to click on like a different tab. So instead of the regular videos, there's like a tab that says live streams or something like that. And you can just click on that. It'll take you to all the, the past live streams. Okay, any other patrons or channel members here who sent me a game? I want to do yours first. Just let me know in the chat if you are. If not, I will just grab a, a random game. Okay. Lord's a patron. Uh, did you send me your game, Lord? All right, just tell me your name. Um, if it doesn't match, tell me your name. Oh, there it is. I see this one. Actually, no, I don't. I gotta figure out something, guys. Hold on. I haven't streamed since I have this new this thing and it's um it's in the way sorry i'm having a moment here it's in the way for me to read the chat which is not a problem that i had before okay have an idea hold on have an idea let me see if i can do this There we go. All right, cool. That's much better. All right, somebody said they were a patron and you sent me a game. Okay. So, all right, everybody's asking, you can just message me on chess.com or you can email it to the uh, chessvibesyt at gmail. Either of those things work. Just let me know, for those of you who are patrons, let me know your uh, handle so I can find the right game. have Lord's game here, so let me um, do this. All right. And he is white. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, Queen's Gambit. I'm not super familiar. don't I don't really like this uh, because you're you're gonna let your king get opened up and I don't know if your idea was that you would take here and then the bishop would still be hanging but like after this this is I mean black just winning a pawn that way and then the other way is if you take here now your king is unless your plan was like to use this to attack but it still looks Pretty, pretty risky with the queen right here. I mean, I don't think I would do that. So I don't really like d5. Um, probably just moving the knight back is the easiest thing. Like knight, knight d2, maybe? I mean, you could trade here, but then you end up with this isolated pawn. So I, I think I would just play knight d2 if I'm playing this game. Let's see if that happens. Yeah, so now you have to be be careful here. Yep, 
yeah, I guess you're already losing a pawn, right? I don't think you can save everything. Yeah, so just going back, knight, knight d2 probably would have been a, a good choice. Okay, queen e4. Yeah, so you have the, the battery. It's not going to be doing much now. Works to the open file. Okay, everything gets traded. All right. So, yeah, I mean, this isn't such a terrible endgame. Bishops are usually pretty good in endgames where there's pawns on both sides of the board. So you do have that going for you. The bad news, I guess, though, is, I mean, your pawns are pretty bad. And, and blacks are just, like, super nice. So, probably a tough endgame. Yeah, okay. So, we go here. I don't like this. I don't like this. Now your bishop is stuck. What, what is your bishop going to do now? I mean, even if you play a4, there's going to be c6. I don't, I don't like that move. I think you got to keep your bishop like centralized and use the fact that your bishop can go to like both sides of the board. So you want to be putting that thing right there and then try to be as annoying as you can. Get your king like right here somewhere and just kind of see what what's black black's going to do. But yeah, putting it over here is, is not a good choice. Yeah, I think black could have played c6 and that would have been maybe a little better, but okay. Even trading is pretty good, I guess. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't take this because generally speaking, if you have a passed pawn like this in an end game like this, it's usually a pretty easy win. Let's see. Maybe this is an exception because white is almost getting there. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is because your king is very active, so I guess it's a little bit different. Normally, you can just push the passed pawn with your king to support it, and then eventually you abandon it and go like take all the other pawns. In this case, it's a little tricky because white's king does have the option to come after this, and then white has the passed pawn. So maybe that's why black didn't do that, which makes sense. Yeah, I mean, this endgame is actually not so bad for you. Bishop's going to be really good. You can go hunt these pawns, or you can also keep an eye on things on the other side of the board. Um, yeah, so I think you're doing okay here. Nice. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to trade uh, because were you low on time? No, you had time. Yeah, you don't want to trade because black has the extra pawn. And over here, they're going to have an extra pawn. So I don't think... Yeah, I don't think that was a good decision. I think I would have just... Let's see what I play here. I, I don't know. Just move your bishop and just kind of keep moving it around. It's going to be very difficult for black to win this. As long as your bishop's on the board. As soon as you trade that off, most players are gonna be able to figure out a way to win with the extra pass pawn. They're gonna like push these and make one over here that you can't deal with, or they're gonna, you know, figure out something. So I don't think I would have traded there. Yeah, and see, this is your problem, right? You can't, you just can't deal with that. You're, you're too slow. Yeah. So uh, in those end games, even if you're down a pawn or two, remember the rule try to trade pawns and keep the pieces because the more pawns you trade it gets harder and harder for your opponent to win and as long as you keep your bishop it was going to be very difficult so just keep that in mind okay let me um catch up on chat i think there was another patron somebody else said they were a patron who was that neon joe uh yeah you can send it to my email or chess.com. Lennon Kitchens. You can send it also chess.com or email. Yeah, is your is your name the same or is it different? Just tell me so I can easily find it. Let's see. 
Okay, I found Neon Joe. Um, Lennon, just let me know what your handle is, where you sent it. Okay, I'm gonna do Neon Joe's and then I will find Lennon's. Is it chess.com? I take it. All right, we're gonna go over here. Let me switch back to this one. All right, Neon Joe. Let me actually do this. I want the feedback, okay. Oh, okay, Vienna Gambit. This looks really good. I don't think black's supposed to do this. This is pretty common in like other openings too. If you can ever take one of your pawns and they have to recapture with the knight, a lot of times you can just get like huge tempo gain harassing the knights with your pawns. Yeah. So this, this should be really good for you. This is, you know what this is actually like? This is like the Halloween Gambit. Except you don't have to sacrifice your knight, you trade a pawn. You don't know what I'm talking about. Halloween Gambit is like this, and then you sack your knight just so that you can play d4, get a huge center, and like harass the knights. So that's kind of what you got, but you didn't have to give up your knight, which is even better. Probably e5. Yeah. Great. I like winning. I have three. Yep. Bishop d3, not bad, but I want to go for this pawn. I, I want to go for this pawn. Because, I mean, usually the downside of this is if black's able to castle, then the rook's defending it. You don't really have much. They're not going to be castling that soon. Because the knight, I'm going to go to c4 with my bishop for sure. And I also have the f file. So I'm gonna, let me see if Stockfish agrees with me. Oh, Stockfish says D5. Yeah, that's good too. Just taking the knight back. But yeah, I'm gonna play here and I'm gonna castle and I'm gonna sack that bishop probably. Like for example, if the knight comes here, I'm gonna be thinking about taking that and just castling and, and going for the king. Um, let's see how bad it is. Stockfish isn't showing it, but yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this every time, castle. Maybe it's maybe it's too too ambitious. E5. Yeah, you could probably play it. Anyway, that's just my opinion. I would prefer the bishop on this diagonal in this position. This is good if they're like already castled or you're expecting in the castle like right away. But all right, let's keep going. Six. Queen e2. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I, I wonder if you can just take it and castle. And take advantage of that. I mean, Queen E2 is definitely not bad, though. It's pretty good, yeah. 56, okay. Yeah, this is a very tricky position. Like, I want to be thinking about this. Because the bishop can't take, so the king has to come up. Then you castle. Knight F6. Take c6. Okay. Castle. Yeah, I mean, this is a very tricky position. I think you're playing it fine. Uh, basically, uh, if this is me, how long is this game? Yeah, I would I would spend quite a bit of time at, at this position because there's a lot of options here. I mean, this is a not an easy position. Like, I'm gonna check knight f7. I'm gonna think about just castling. I might even think about like bishop a3. Um. So many moves, yeah. And even like Bishop B5 is an idea because the knight's gonna be gonna have some problems. So I would definitely. How long did you spend on that position? Yeah, I would spend longer than than 11 seconds if I were you. Little time management tip. These a lot of times are critical positions. Now it's easy for me. I'm looking at Stockfish. I can see like exactly what the best move was. But in the game, you don't know 
Like you don't know when you're gonna have a winning tactic pop up. And so my advice, just take take longer and, and just analyze some stuff, you know, check out a couple different things. There's no way that you consider too many moves in 11 seconds, right? So I would say just think a little bit more next time. I mean, this is obviously not a bad move at all. It's, it's fine. I'm just saying you, maybe you had some sort of winning sacrifice, you know? All right, bishop g5. This is good. I also like bishop a3. Let's see what Stockfish likes better. Because this is really good because you get the pressure on the knight. This is really good because you keep the king in the center and castle through check, right? So they're good for different reasons. Um, Stockfish says they're basically equal. It likes bishop a3 a little bit more because then you can like bring this rook over. And the thing about not castling is not only is the king in the center, but the rooks are awkward. Like, what are the what's this rook gonna do if black can't castle? See, normally you castle and then you can like bring it to the center and you know you start doing something with your rook. You can even bring it over here. But when it's stuck over here, it's like it, it has nothing to do. And so that's what that's another reason why keeping the king in the center is, is really good. But all right, bishop d5 definitely a, also a good move. Yeah, and so see, even though you're getting some some nice stuff here. Black is going to get the rook involved. And if they're able to like hide in the corner, they might actually be okay. Well, let's see what happened. You took here, looks pretty. Yeah, this this does look very good though. I mean, queen f2. Hmm. So, all right, let's, let's focus here for a minute. Okay, and again, I noticed you spent, what is that, nine seconds on this move? Um, this is like another critical position, right? When you get your opponent's king open like this, and you have pieces that are like poised for an attack in different ways, you got to figure out the best way to, to take advantage of that. And, you know, chess is like, you can have a winning position and then throw it in one or two moves very quickly. So this is a moment I'm going to spend like a good two, three minutes figuring out how do I make like what's the best way to approach this you know like queen h5 looks like it could be really good maybe a rook lift could be really good uh I mean maybe this move but I'm gonna think about it more than than a few seconds you know maybe even bringing this rook over I, I don't know I'm gonna think through it even here as an idea right setting up that looks like f5 maybe but that's the stuff that I want to think through and by the way queen h5 stockfish is saying is completely winning you're threatening checkmate I guess black has to play f5 and then you can just take it with the rook and the point is the rook is, or the point is that the bishop is more valuable than the rook because if black takes it guess what there's no stopping that mate it's mate in uh, mate in eight even if i didn't know it was mate in eight i could see that this is really really good for white right so i would say yeah just try to slow down a little bit in these key moments because this is like very very crucial position and just to give you an idea, you went from plus seven to plus three. So you just lost four points of advantage in one inaccurate move. And if now, if you play another inaccurate move, you, you might be back to an equal position, like just like that, right? So just keep that in mind. I mean, not, not that this is bad, like you're making a threat, but queen h5 was just like even stronger. Hope that made sense. I'm um, just checking the chat. What's up, Jay? What's going on? All right, I guess I'm mostly caught up. Let's keep going. Rook B8. All right, so you took the pawn. Oof. Yeah, I mean. Okay, here, here's the thing about this, Joe. If you think about what what is so good about this position for white right now like like what's the one thing that is really good for white it's black's king like look at this right and what's the number one way that you make someone pay for having an exposed king it's to checkmate them and that's much easier to do with your queen right if queens are off the board it's hard to checkmate someone like it yeah it's possible and with the Two rooks and a bishop maybe you can do it but the chances go way down okay right now you still have queen h4 or queen g3 or i don't know you know 
something uh, to create an attack. But as soon as you play this move, yeah, you got a pawn. But now black's gonna trade. I'm like sure that they traded. Yeah, they, they're gonna trade. And you've got an end game now where it's five and you have six, which okay, cool. You have an extra pawn, but this is not an easy end game to win. And you, I mean, you had a really nice position. Now it's, it's relatively equal. So those are the things you wanna keep in mind. I know it's tempting, like, especially if you don't see anything right away, you're, you're tempted to just be like, well, it's a free pawn, let me take it. But, uh, you know, if it's me, I'm gonna play a move like Queen H4. I guess, let's see, I guess black has to play F5. And I'm not gonna trade. I'm gonna keep the queen on the board. I'm gonna, maybe I'll go check. Maybe I'll just like sit it here and plan on bringing my rook up. And this is how I'm gonna like keep my advantage, right? So, cause look at our king. We're not worried about black's queen. We're fine. If we need to, we can go over here. No problems. Black's the one that has to figure out how do they save the game and not get mated in the next like five moves, right? So, all right, I, I think I've made the point. So now we, we have an end game and what is this move? Does that actually, wow, uh, I guess. I guess you can just take this and then take that rook and you win a pawn. Uh, I guess I guess you went a pawn this way too. Oh, you went back. Yeah, you could have went a pawn two different ways. So if you take here with check and then you just take it, or I guess you could take it and then you take this pawn. So just work on those tactics a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, see here, here you spent, what is this? few seconds 10 a little over 10 seconds this is a moment where like if my opponent plays a move like this i'm gonna be like whoa wait a second wait a second what's going on here so yeah just try to slow down a little bit i, I feel like you're playing pretty good and i think if you just analyze a little more you can play and play even better you wanted to rush into the end game yeah now now joe i will tell you like sometimes like strong players like international grandmasters they will intentionally go into an end game but it's only when they they are like 100 percent sure that they know how to win the end game and it's like an obvious win you know this position this is not like a clear win for white like yes you have an extra pawn yeah you're probably slightly better but this is this is a weird position black has an open file that they can do stuff with i mean it's not an easy, an easy, uh, easy win. So it's it's not the same situation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, so I like the idea here, trapping the bishop, I like that. I guess it can get away. Yeah, I wonder if you could have just like done this idea and left the bishop kind of stuck there because right now it's sort of trapped. Yeah, I think maybe that would have been a good plan. Oh, yeah, Stockfish is telling me Rook F5 is the easy way. Just go like this and go get it. When you play C3, you know, you allow it to escape. So, um, yeah, I guess this is kind of another example of, like, you have a really nice thing going for you in the position, and then you kind of, like, give it away, right? Like, you have this, this bishop is trapped, and so don't, don't play a move that lets it out. Like, keep that going for you. Do some other stuff, so... What's up, Peter? Welcome. Welcome to Stalematers. All right, so now we just have like a pretty even position. This just looks like a very even end game now. Okay, so black blunders the piece. It's still not that easy to win, but yeah, you should be able to win this now. Okay, so you got the win, but I think you could have had it much easier. Um, going back to like that there was that one position right right here yeah this was this is really bad news for black if you play queen h5 it's all over and keep in mind like when you get into positions like this don't be afraid at all to give up a rook like you have another one over here and all you need to do is clear the way for the checkmate right i mean black black's gonna have a very difficult time defending that so don't be afraid to, to sacrifice an exchange and the other thing to think about even if even if you didn't have mate in a couple moves, you're giving up a rook for four points. You're giving up five for four points. It's like, that's not that bad of a trade. You're only, it's like sacrificing a pawn, right? If you count up the, the points. So 
Anyway, uh, nice game. I think I will try to find um, Lennon's game. Let me see. I, su I assume you sent it on chess.com. Uh, Lennon, what is your name? What is your, your name on chess.com? Yeah, what's your name? I'm not seeing it. Okay, Peter, you'll be next. Oh, it is Lennon Kitchen? Uh... chess.com you say you messaged me oh, oh okay so there's like messages and then there's like the direct message chat i got you i got you i was looking at messages i found it okay here we go here we go all right lennon let's see what we got Here's a game you can analyze and laugh at my massive blunder in the end game. All right, let's see. No, I won't laugh. We all make blunders, so I won't laugh. Okay. So, it's e6, okay, and f6, fine, e6. This is a passive move, uh, you can play that. I. Personally, I like to kind of be a little bit more aggressive and I like, you know, taking here. You do have to know a little bit of some some lines and some theory. So if you're not familiar with that, D6 is okay. Um, but there's like a cool line where you take, they push, and I think you can play D5. And you allow this, it looks a little bit scary, but it's actually really good for black. And if they like take here, you just take back. and basically you have these like amazing pawns just completely controlling the center and this is just so much better for black you can actually castle and your your king is pretty safe behind the bishop get your rook over um if white doesn't castle this is ready to go and it, it, it comes down to these pawns this is just awesome for black so i would say try, try to learn some of these lines if you haven't this is really a really good one to know because a lot of people think that they can just push on you and it's pretty common when this bishop's on c4 you want to look for a moment to play d5 because you can do it with tempo on the bishop you're also freeing up your bishop and you're kind of blocking off this diagonal which is where a lot of white's counterplay comes from so keep that in mind but i mean d6, d6 is a is a solid move it's just after like knight g5 you, you, i don't know what exactly you're going to be doing so d5 bishop g4 okay so I guess, let me see. You played that really quickly. So I, I, I think you probably already know, if you don't know, these pieces are three points and pawns are one point. So whenever you have a situation like this, you don't want to be trading a pawn for a knight. You're losing two points every time you do that. Now, if you knew that, um, then I guess you just didn't see this and you, you want to pay attention and I would say move a little bit slower. You're playing a 30 minute game and you moved in three seconds. So that's really fast for a 30 minute game. I mean, you, you have plenty of time to do a blunder check and to say, okay, what's going on? Especially with your opponents like last move, right? What's going on? What are they threatening? Oh yeah, my knight's saying I, I should probably do something about that. You know, just take your time and slow down a little bit, I would say. So, we lost a knight, which is not good. Um, usually, usually just giving up your bishop right away for the knight is not what you want to do because it develops the queen for them. You no longer have a pin, which is kind of nice. Right, right, right now you have a pin. So that knight can't. Uh, that knight can't move anyway. Even if White wanted to do something with that knight, you're gonna take the queen. So when you take, you don't have a pin, and you give up a bishop for a knight, which is usually not not the greatest trade. So I don't really like that move. E5 now, okay, so, I mean, yeah, this is, even though you're losing a pawn at this point, it's, it's a nice move to get your bishop out. So I do like the idea. 
Um, I think if it's me, I'm gonna just take this pawn back first because it's just sitting here and I don't want it to take me and come over here. So I'll take this, play d5 is what you really need to do. But okay, d5 first, now you take this. Yeah, see, you just have your ordering wrong there. You wanna take this first, then you can use this pawn to support d5 and you actually have a nice little center there. The way that you did it, uh, now it's white's pawn that's supporting their pawn, right? So, all right, let's keep going. Bishop b4. So yeah, this is a, I'm glad we're looking at this game because this is something that a lot of players think is good, right? It's like, hey, if I can get a check, why not? Let's, let's get a check, right? The thing is, checks in and of themselves don't really do much for you. And in this case, white can play c3 and you're going to lose a tempo, right? Because now you have to move your bishop because the pawn's attacking and you kind of wasted this move, right? So generally speaking, the only time you want to throw in a check like this is if your opponent can't easily block it with like a pawn or something, right? So I don't like that move. I think you should have played maybe bishop c5 is good on this diagonal or bishop d6 is okay. But not bishop b4. And they didn't play c3. They played knight d2, but uh, okay. Castle, that's good. Castling is good. Get your king out of the center. I can't see you, but you're nodding a lot. <laughs> okay. Good, good. All right, so you know, now c3. See, now we have to waste a move. Okay, so uh, I like what you're doing. Like you're saying, you know, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to create my own counterattack. I, I actually like that a lot. And the fact that white hasn't castled, this is a good move because you're, you know, you're trying to take advantage of that. You have your rook ready to go. And so I like that. Yeah, this is, this is okay. And I hope you played. Yeah, nice. Awesome. So that was... That was a very, that's more of an advanced thing. So even though you missed some of those obvious blunders, you're, you're thinking ahead about like, don't always have to respond to my opponent's threats. I can create some counter attacking things and that's exactly what you did. You ended up winning the queen. So very, very nice little comeback there, right? This guy's going crazy with the sacrifices. Awesome. So yeah, you took a completely lost position and now you turned it around. So nice job with that. And then you saved your bishop, cool. Uh, you, you probably could have went here to try to trade this because it's pinned. And since you're ahead now with the queen, trading is good. The more you trade, the closer you get to the end game. But bishop d6 is totally fine too. It's castles. Queen takes d6. All right, fine. Okay. Ooh, yeah. So I don't know what you were thinking. Um... I mean, maybe you're thinking like this and you can take care of a check. That's what you're thinking. It makes sense. The problem is you're putting yourself into a pin and also white can just take here. So, you know, thinking about the last game when I was showing that sacrifice, it was a rook for a bishop and a pawn, but it opened up the diagonal to where we had a really nice follow-up checkmate threat. In this position, you got to ask yourself, What's gonna be my follow-up threat to this? Like, like, how am I gonna proceed after this happens, right? Now, of course, white has an even better move, which pins your queen, but I'm just assuming that, you know, let's just say that wasn't even there. You still have to ask yourself, like, what am I doing? Like, why am I giving up a bishop for a pawn? What's the reason? And you have to have a specific reason before you, before you do that. So, oh, you were thinking that you could take here. Yeah, so you just gotta work on your tactics and you'll get better at that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, sometimes when there's a lot going on, it's it's easy to overlook some of that stuff. But oh, your opponent didn't do it this way. Okay, they didn't uh, go for the the pin. All right. All right. So let me talk about something that I'm noticing here. You're playing a lot of moves with your queen, and you're not you're forgetting that you have this rook over here. Like this rook is a powerful piece too. Like yeah, you're up the queen. That's good. But you got to use your other pieces. This rook's doing like absolutely nothing sitting over here in the corner. I mean, defending the pawn, but that's that's like irrelevant. This is not what you want to be worried about. You want to get this rook into the game. So instead of all these queen moves, uh, I want to see you get this rook involved. Bring it over here. Let, let's get it into the action. Because if you get the, the rook involved somehow, now you can start threatening checkmate. I, I wouldn't actually go there because of the bishop. But, you know, you understand the idea. Get this rook involved and it's going to be much better for you. So, all right. Queen h3. Okay five all right so finally the rook is coming into the game so i like that 
and you're playing very quickly in such a long game um i would say slow down a little bit because i mean this is a good idea this is a good idea but yeah all right let's see what happens okay okay yeah you're crushing them now all right Ooh. yeah i don't know this is like the second time in this game where you missed a pawn capture so it's interesting because you know different people struggle with like different types of blunders um some people it's the knights they just like can't deal with the knights and and i'm noticing that you're you're kind of falling for these pawn captures so maybe you know your next game like before you move especially if you're playing a 30 minute game before you move just double check the pawns like just let me just make sure that there's no pawns that are like gonna take any of my pieces because it seems like that would help you a little bit all right so now we have a relatively equal position i mean the, the bishop and rook and all these pawns it's kind of difficult for the queen but yeah i mean maybe you can pick off some of their pieces okay so all right so you got one pawn that's good oh yeah 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 it happens um i think just slow down a little bit too do do your blunder check and you'll, you'll probably see some of that i mean overall you didn't play bad um but uh just just quite a few blunders so if you eliminate some of those blunders you're gonna you're gonna do much better all right cool thanks for that game and there was someone else i think peter was next in line right peter yeah peter all right let me go find your game Um, Peter, let's see. Did you send it on chess. Oh, there it is. There it is. I found it. PXM 23, right? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to do the um the second one that you sent me. Do the second one. All right, so Peter is PXM23. Yeah, Lennon, no problem, no problem. All right, so let's go here and... All right, King's Gambit, I like it. I get chip c4 and c3 i like it d4 yep yeah, great yeah i mean opening is looks great so far yep 95 looks like a fine move um Sometimes you want to consider e5 when they play like a knight of, knight of six like this, because a lot of times what happens is, I don't know if this is a, an example, but a lot of times the knight doesn't have a good place to go to, like can't go here or here. Um, if it goes here, sometimes you can even just sacrifice this pawn and like open everything up. So that's what I would consider. It looks like Stockfish is saying it doesn't right, quite work. And that in 95 is just the better move. So that's fine. Good job finding that. Yeah, because this also, you know, kind of accomplished the same thing. And it's actually, now that I'm looking at it, a better way to do it. So nice. Yeah, looks really good. Got the queen. Yep, nice. Picking off the knight, okay. Chip D2, um, 
what's the idea here? I'm not sure what the point of that move was. I mean, if I'm you, I'm gonna just keep taking stuff. Like, I, I'm not worried about this. Like, that's just trade, and I'm happy with trades, so I think I would've just taken that, but. Okay, now you take it, all right. Yeah, see, I don't like letting the Rook come in, but. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, all right, so it's it's not a bad idea. I mean, you're gonna get to the king for sure if you do this. The problem that I'm noticing is that you're running out of pieces, right? Like you've got the queen, you've got the rook. The rook is very misplaced. And I don't know what just your queen is gonna be able to do, except maybe throw in some checks. But I'm assuming you're trying to win this game. And so that's the thing about sacrificing. You wanna make sure you have enough pieces to follow up the attack. Because if you run out, I mean, it might not be easy for you, right? So, okay, and so we're gonna get another um, queen versus rook and bishop, okay. But yeah, they're undefended right now, and so this should be great for you. So I think it's fine. I think black could have made your life a little bit more difficult here if they had not traded. Because they, they basically took like an active rook and traded it for a non-active rook over here, which was good for you, right? Like if they would have done something I don't know what else they could have done. Maybe like this would be pretty annoying. Like, yeah, you can take the bishop, but now you have to be really careful with the rooks on the seventh on the second rank. I don't know. I, I'm not sure that I, I really like this this sacrifice. I think Yeah, I mean it's a tough position. It's it's not easy because if you do something like this or this, then the rook's coming down and you yeah, you have to be careful. Alright, let's keep going. I don't know. It's it's not an easy position. Okay, check. Did you get a draw? No, okay, good. Good, I like that you're pushing the pawn. Yep, that works. Cool, yeah, pretty good game. Like overall, really nice game. I, li I especially like the opening. Like you played that really great. You just did everything you're supposed to in the King's Gambit. Developed quickly. Put your pieces on good squares. You got the center, which is kind of like one of the points of the King's Gambit, right? Just get black to give up control. And then you just put your pawns there. I, I really liked that. And then you played the best move here, knight d5. Yeah, nice game. Nice game. All right, guys. Uh, any other members or uh, patrons? super chats will get priority because i have like too many games to go through them all right now so jay jay sent his game against me all right jay let's look at it let's look at it Um, let's see, where's it at? I'm trying to find it. All right, let me look at this game from Jay. And then I'll do uh, Julian's next. Okay, so let's do Jay's and then Julian's. How about that? Oh, this I remember this game, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's gonna make me show my loss. Alright. Fine. I'm okay. I'm okay losing. So just so you guys know, this is when I was playing like a whole bunch of daily games and I, I was just like, I wasn't thinking too much and I was playing some some weird stuff. So yeah, I'm white, Jay is black and here we go. Yeah, see, see, this is not, this is not good. Like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm just, I was like, just, 
I, I don't know. I was like, I'm gonna play some crazy gambit and see what happens and give away like all my pawns for no reason. So yeah, that's what happened. So we get this position. Um, and I mean, Jay's just kind of doing normal stuff. He's developing his pieces. I, I was the one like just, you know, sacrificing for no reason. A lot of times you can get away with that when, when it's like a gambit that has a, a, a reason. I, I didn't really have like good compensation. I kind of just gave up some pawns. I didn't really like have clear compensation for it, right? So, yeah. And then I took here. Why did I take this? So I wanted to open up the king. The problem, the problem is that two bishops in an open position are really good. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this was a good trade or not. I, I opened up the king, but like I said, now I have to deal with the two bishops. So, and you're going to see how like bishops actually a really good defender here. So I remember this moment, it was kind of tricky and I ended up just, let's see what happened. Yes. Okay. It's coming back to me. So normally, normally two bishops for a rook, it's good to get the bishops. In this case, I have the knights, so I'm going to have two knights versus a rook. Two knights, not as good. Uh, a knight and a bishop is very good and two bishops is even better. But two knights is still pretty good. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's take here. We'll allow this and I'll go up for this trade. The other problem though, is that remember the beginning of the game where I like lost all my pawns? I have five pawns and Jay has what? Three, six, seven pawns. There's two pawns. And then on top of that, the rooks are actually very easily able to enter the game. Like sometimes you have it where like pawns are kind of sort of blocking the files and the rooks can't get in. But if the rooks can get in, it's kind of like, you know, normally the two pieces are better, but now the rooks start to be, be a little better. And then the further you get in the game, the, the stronger the rook gets. And when you add the, that with the fact that black has a bunch of pawns, that's what happened, right? Let me look at this. This is a very good rook, right? And so, you know, it's cutting off my king. This pawn is kind of overextended, could be a target for the king. Um, and like I said, I, it was a daily game. I, I wasn't like thinking through all of these moves. I was just kind of, you know, going with it pretty quickly. And so now you can really see the rook is like all over my pawns. And um, little, little uh, tidbit about knights. They're really, really bad at stopping outside past pawns. And so this is like a, this is such a bad position because of this. The rook is here, the pawn is about to go. I'm not in a position to stop it. And um, I don't have any counterplay over here. It's too, it's gonna take me too long to like take all these pawns and try to push one down. So we'll go quickly because I mean, Jay played pretty well. He just kind of took my pawns when he could. And then this was a nice sacrifice. And we ended up with the queen against uh, the knight, which of course this is a win for the, the queen. So yeah, that's what happened. That's how you beat me in the daily games, if you were wondering. Peter, just a quick question. Do you think my inactive rook is why it felt really difficult to convert that position? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. That rook on A1 was, was not good for a while, yep. All right, I think I was doing Julian's next. Let's see, Julian, what was your, what was your handle? Lost it, where did it go? All right, Julian's next and then we'll get some more. Sorry guys, I have like 20 games in my messages, so uh, I can't like do them all. Um, okay, there it is, I got it. Cool, Julian, here we go.
and Julian is black. So let's flip this. Okay. Just give me one second. Let me make sure that the kids are asleep. Yep, we're good. We are good. Okay. What do we got here? Oh, I don't want that on. Hold on. Take off the feedback. Okay. Oh, is he playing the King's Indian? All right, cool. Okay, so he goes for the 96 line. Not bad. E5. Oh, so this is kind of the, the general plan that I teach in the course. Uh, I will say against the uh, Fee and Keto lines, I do teach a little bit different line. D6, Knight C6, and then Bishop F5, and I, I like that one. But, you know, it is a lot to remember, and so if you kind of go with the sort of standard plan, it usually works out pretty well. Um, one thing about E5, normally, uh, excuse me, normally there's the pawn on E4. Like, a lot of times white plays E4. And so when, when the pawn's on E4, and you play E5, and you get this trade, which that's not what happened in the game, but when you get this trade, takes, 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 usually you can do a, a sacrifice where you move your knight here, you take that pawn, and the point is that after they take you back, you're, you're taking their knight and you're actually winning back your pawn. But in this case, there's no pawn, so you're, you're not winning back your pawn, so you're actually going to lose a pawn, which is not really what you want. So in this particular case, the, the fee and keto variation is a little different because a lot of times white doesn't play e4 so it kind of changes things so if you try to do the exact same thing it you know it doesn't work quite as well so in this case you probably need to play rook e8 first and then play e5 or you can play c5 if you want because you have that supported and you know go into something like this and then you try to make you know take advantage of the fact that your bishop is active along this diagonal so that's just something to think about. I, you know, this is definitely the, the plan in, in probably eight out of 10 games, this will work. But in the Fianchetto variation, it's a little different. But white didn't take it, so okay. Knight g4, that's a good move. It's a good move. You're going for the bishop, and it opens up your bishop. That's a very good move. Bishop. Yeah, I like this too. I think I think that's a fine, fine move. Just get out of there. F6 is a tempting move to play, but the problem is you you block your bishop and you weaken this diagonal permanently. So I, I really like that you didn't do that. I think queen e8 is, is a nice move. Okay. Yeah, this is actually a good counterattack. This is a good because if white takes it, that's a that's a good that's a good trade. Okay. Knight h5, um, I'm not a fan of that move. I think this is a good moment to just go ahead and take and open up this diagonal. And also you get the benefit that once this pawn is gone, your knight can go to c5, which is gonna put some more pressure on the center, right? So I think I would take here and then try to think about bringing my knight there. That's what I would do. Knight h5. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's not a bad move, but in this case, I think just taking made, made more sense. Okay, so you see now we're going to go into a locked position, which is just a different type of game. Knight c5 now. Yeah, see, so this is a little different because your knight's not here, so you're not actually threatening that, which would have been nice, right? That's why if you kind of did this earlier, you could have actually made the threat, but okay, let's see what happens. Should be three. Okay, it's good that you got a5 in because b4 was going to... Yeah, your knight was gonna have to leave, so I like this. Okay. Now you go back. Yeah, so definitely looks like you've got like all the ideas about the King's Indian in your head correctly. Like you know the stuff that you're supposed to do. Like put your knight on c5, like play a5, like strike back with e5. Like sometimes we do play knight h5 so we can play f5 and f4. Um it, it just looks like you're a little bit 
mixing them up mixing them up or maybe not sure what to do which makes total sense king's indian is not like it's not super easy when you start to put all those pieces together so i think um i, I think it's fine you know you'll figure this out as you keep playing it but yeah i mean you're still making the attack i think here like i would have maybe considered f5 since you have already have your knight there like i want to start thinking about expanding here getting your rook involved but anyway let's see what happened oh they just gave you the pawn okay oh okay i th think you can just take this um unless there's a tactic that i'm not seeing but it looks like a free pawn so you know this is kind of one of the central ideas of the king's indian once you once you get this and they push by you want to be looking at pressuring that e e4 pawn right uh, and you have it here. It's just a free pawn. If you take this, you're in you're in real good shape. You're in real good shape. Now you're gonna play f5, f4, and and you know white's gonna be in big trouble. So just pay attention to those pawns. Okay. All right. So you did see that. Very good. And you you defended it. So nice. And now you played f5. All right. I, I don't. I like that. I like that. G5. Okay. Um. It's a good idea. The problem is you didn't need to do it. Like you're you're ready to go with F4 right now. Like you don't need to play G5 first. You already have one, two, two defenders. And so you're good. You just play this and, and white's toast. I mean, what are they gonna do? Take here. Now your bishop's open. You've got this. I mean, this is really good for you. So you just needed to go for that right away. G5 is not a bad idea. Uh, the problem is it allows white to, no, they didn't do it, but it allows them to take here. And it looks like you're going to get some weaknesses along the white squares now. So, uh, but okay, let's keep going. You did get F4 in, All right? Yeah, so this is not an easy position. This is this is a tricky position. I think you you probably could take here first and then take here but this way yeah i guess this works okay too oh he took back that way yeah see i guess this is why the other way is a little better you're forcing you're forcing the king to get open this way whereas it, what happened it's a little bit more closed off because this pawn is still here and defended right you didn't you weren't able to get rid of that pawn all right but that's good you're still you're still playing while you're attacking it i like that this is a great move. Yeah, really nice move. You're getting your king somewhere safer and you're opening this up for the rook to attack his king. Fantastic move. That's a really good move. Yep, great, great idea. Like a nice plan. Like that's a plan that a lot of eight, 900 rated players are not gonna think about. So I, I'm impressed that you, that you did that. I mean, I like this too, because if white takes you, your queen's coming over, which is great news for you. And even if they don't take you, you're threatening to take and then bring your queen there, which is also good for you. You've got your knights set up nicely here. Um, maybe I would think about... Yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yep, great. And you bring... oh, awesome. Yeah, that's really good. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great game. The, the opening was, you know, a few things were, were wrong, but overall, fantastic, fantastic game. And you, d you did this king side attack actually really well. Uh, the only thing was like here, you could have played f4 right away, but overall, this was, was fantastic. Really nice game. All right. Patrons who I missed. Or members who I missed. All right, did I get all the members? Maybe I did. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna go find another random game then. All right, we'll see what we got.
Uh, let's see. Let me do Dragonian Spirit. I think they've been asking for a while. Okay. Alright, here we go. Here we go. I feel like if it's if I'm playing this game, I might play like Queen D3 or Queen C2 or Bishop D3 only because I don't like giving up. Like like I really like having these pawns like this because you've got total control. As soon as you push forward, now Black has a little outpost. Now it's a trade off, a trade off because you gain space and you sort of get some potential things to do. So I don't know. I mean, you also open up the diagonal. So I guess it's probably fine, but I just like to leave it just a little while longer so I can get, get castled, get some more pieces out, and then look for ways. But I think this is okay too. Queen B3. I don't like Queen B3. I don't like giving up this bishop. And you're you're giving black this move. Especially like especially in this position, right? Because black might want to be castling kingside. Looks very like a very logical move. And I want this bishop to create some threats over here. And also, black's a little jammed up. Like, I don't know what they're doing, especially with these pieces. And if you play queen b3, guess what? Knight a5's happening. Bishop's coming out somewhere at some point. And I think black's position gets much better. Yep, that's what they did. Yeah, so what, what, what should we play instead? I think... Bishop d2. Just develop and defend. And get ready to castle. That's what I would play. Yeah, see now. Ooh, knight c3, yeah. Mm. Knights are kind of all over you now. Bishop g5 was a good move. Yeah, this knight is super strong now because you have no pawns. And, um, yeah, that knight is just really good. I don't like queen f1. Hmm. Do you have to play that? Yeah, it's a rough position. The problem with queen f1 is you can't castle, and if you can't castle, this rook's never gonna get into the game, and if that rook's never getting into the game, I don't- I don't- can't see how anything good could happen. So I, I'm almost like would rather play some other move, you know, let this happen so that at least my rooks can like do stuff, right? Like, yeah, we, it's maybe not the greatest, but at least I can go here. I can do this. I can do this, right? Like I can use my pieces and get some counterplay. Going back to the game, it's like, ooh, this guy's just stuck in the corner. So it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. 
Remember that bishop that we lost earlier on knight a5? Now we're starting to see what's happening. Yeah, okay. Yeah, biggest thing. Uh, I mean, you had a great position. Um, just got to be careful. It all it all started to go downhill right here. Right here. This was a big, big, big move. So, number one, bishops are usually better than knights. Especially if you can get an open position. And so, keep your bishops when you can. Which means, watch out for these knight forks. And uh, don't forget to finish your development. You needed to castle, and you needed to develop this guy, which didn't really happen for like a lot of moves later, right? Never really got castled, and so, yeah. But that's that's a tough game. I mean, that's kind of goes to show how like one small decision can make a big impact on the game. It helps a lot. Cool, good, I'm glad. All right, I feel like I was gonna do someone else's game next. And I don't remember whose it was. All right, Cade sent a game features another streamer, okay. Henry, thank you for the super chat. I don't know if Henry has a game, but I will do yours next if you have one. Let me do Cade's. Um, Cade, where did you send it? Was that an email? You've been waiting for 60 minutes. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been waiting for like over an hour now. Sorry guys, I, I can't uh, do everyone. Unfortunately. Music's a little loud. Is the is the music loud, guys? Is it too loud? Been waiting your entire life. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's not too loud. No, it's not too loud. Okay, so it's it's a matter of preference. I don't really mind the music volume. Okay, a bit loud. All right, I guess we'll leave it. it seems like more people are okay with it, but uh, sorry for you, those of you who. Just looking for a game. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna do this one. This is from Cade, and then I think I will get Frosty. Frosty's been waiting a while. Oh, this is a this is a high level game. Let's. Let's not do that because most of my viewers are like lower level. So I'm going to do, let me check Frosties. And honestly, I have more to say at the lower level. When you get to like 2000, I don't have like as much that I can help you with. All right, Frosty, what, what's your name? What did you send it on? Macro, Macro the Mance. Where's that at? Let's see, let's see. There it is, I got it, got it. Got it, got it. Oh, you gotta give me access. You gotta make your, your library public or whatever. Otherwise I can't see it. Unless you have the link to the actual game from your game history. But if you put it into a collection, you have to give access to the collection.
Um, there was someone else who I was gonna do. Let's see. Alright, Frosty's gonna change his thing. Let's check one other game while we're waiting. This game is from Sun. Let's see, what's the rating? 1800. Yeah, that's a little too high, so I'm not gonna do this one either right now. Okay, C Cheese. C Cheese, what's your name? Let's do C Cheese. Oh yeah, Henry, Henry, yes, yes, yes. Henry super chatted. Um Henry, did you email it or did you send it on chess.com? What's your username? What's your name on chess.com? Why don't I see C cheese? Why don't I see it? I don't see it. I don't know, man. I don't see it. All right, Henry. I I'm tr I'm trying to get Henry's name. What what is Henry's name? I G N. That's your name. Um. What is it? Oh, I see, I see. I got it. I got you, I got you. Here we go. Here we go. I don't know what IGN stands for. Does that mean like username or something? I, I don't know. But I think this is you. I think this is you. Let's see. Wait, 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 wait. This is your game, right, Henry? You're black? Yeah, did I get it? In-game name. Thank you. Didn't know that. Learn something new every day. All right. This is Henry? Yeah? All right, cool. Here we go. Oh, wow. All right, so you're playing this. Um... All right, yeah, I mean, I can't, what can I say? I play that too, sometimes. And they didn't want to, wow, yes, yeah, so this is, this is great. They're just giving you everything you want. I mean, this is, this is awesome. Okay, really good, really good. Yeah, this is good. Even though you lose some tempos here, you, create a lot of weaknesses in white's position so this is totally fine i'm yeah i'm don't mind this at all ninety four okay not bad maybe personally i think i want to just like develop this bishop maybe like bishop d6 um so that i have the option to castle right away but like usually I like to do that before I start going on the offensive too too much. Also, white's kind of jammed up a little bit, and so I don't really want to like trade too much because you're gonna free up their position a little bit. Yeah, now bishop d6. All right, e7. Okay, this is good. Uh, this is great because there's this hole here. Although, is it blundering the pawn? Yeah, maybe you're just blundering the pawn because you, you need that to support this.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna castle first. I'm gonna get my rook involved. And then white's gonna have a hard time moving that knight because you're gonna have discoveries with your bishop somewhere. So I'm gonna castle here. Let me, let me actually turn on the engine on this one. I just wanna see what it says. But I'm fairly certain castling was probably a good move. Yeah. Yep, Stockfish likes this too. And h5. Yeah, h5 is another idea. Just taking advantage of the, the weaknesses, right? The white created on the king side. So h5 is, is a way to get your rook involved. But yeah, this is the best move. So we blundered the pawn. Did they take it? They did take it, yeah. It's an easy mistake to make because you think that they can't do that because you can follow it up like a check or something, but you, you actually just can't because the queen is there, right? So that's unfortunate because that pawn was like awesome. Yeah, that pawn was awesome for you. Still, castle queenside. Because at the end of the day, you want to get your king out of the center. And if you can do it and also make a threat at the same time, why not? Right? Getting that rook lined up on the queen is, is kind of like a threat. Also, there's pawns over here that have already pushed forward. I would rather castle on the other side of the board than castle where there's like some pawns that could push up my king. Right? So... I think castle and queenside, you know. Don't like, don't like assume that you always have to castle kingside. Like, yes, most of the time that's what happens. But be looking for opportunities to go the other way and get your rook involved right away. I actually personally like, I like to castle queenside more than kingside because of the fact that I accomplished like two things at the same time. All right. I know I'm just repeating myself a lot. Okay, so yeah, this is, I don't know what white's doing, but like, this is not good, because they're, let me look at their bishop. So if you can keep the bishop back there, you're golden. So like, it looks like you're doing a good job of that. Knight c4, I guess, is what you're gonna play. Yeah, great, fantastic. I mean, white's position looks really bad now. That's, that looks pretty good. I like that. Three. All right, so as soon as I saw F3, I was like, wait a second, that's weird. Why, why does that move look weird to me? Because the dark, the dark squares, they're so much weaker now over here. So queen E5, and you've got some ideas, right? It's, it's kind of like, you know you have to retreat the queen. So you can choose, let's just say any of these three squares, which one kind of gives you the most options? This, uh, this one, you're not really, I mean, you're not gonna take that pawn. You're not going anywhere on this diagonal, right? So you don't really need these diagonals. This one looks really good. You have a threat and you have an attack on this pawn. So it's like, which diagonals benefit your queen the best? This one's okay, because you have this threat, but over here, not really doing anything. And so that's why I would choose queen e5 instead of queen e6. Okay. Yeah, see king f2. If your queen was sitting right here, you would just take this pawn. But now it's like, what are you? I don't know what your queen's really doing. This is okay. Mm, yeah, it's okay, but I, I'm gonna go to here because this is the half open file. If I'm gonna bring this rook somewhere. I'm going to a half open file. Now, if I had, if I had plans of pushing this pawn forward, that's one thing. But it doesn't look like I'm gonna be playing that anytime soon, right? Unless white changes their mind about their pawns. So I think here maybe is a little better. Okay, so that's not a bad idea. You're like trying to create some threats over here. I think that's a better square for your queen actually. Wow. What just happened? Okay, hold on, hold on. So <laughs> we've got one, two, three, and it's only defended twice. All right, so it, it, it's a free pawn, but it's only a free pawn if you take it with the knight. 
because that's the low value piece and that's the one that you know you can just take back and it's a trade and you win the pawn you take with the rook now you're sacrificing the exchange basically to get that pawn which maybe you can get away with this because black's i mean white's king is in trouble but um that's not really i don't think that's a good decision and it looked like you had an idea that you could pin it but i mean you don't need to do that you already can just take it right you don't need to pin it you, you just take it back so yeah I, I guess just a little miscalculation there and then here i mean white can just take your queen and you're down rook i mean two rooks one rook that rook is gone he sacked earlier so maybe work on your tactics a little bit i'm not sure what the idea was um but yeah you you were doing great you were building up the threats and then all you needed to do is just take it and, and you're fine although i guess maybe you were worried about this pin now that i look at it were you worried about rookie e1 is that why you did that let's see yeah it, tactically you're fine though you can throw in this check i think and then where's the king gonna go? Looks like you're okay. Be f4. Yeah, and you actually are just winning the queen. You've got this. So it was fine. Um, tactically, I think just a little mistake there. And then white did that move, and then okay. You did win the queen anyway. That was a mess, but all right. We got here. Two rooks against the queen. Yeah, this is, I mean, the good news is you have a bunch of pawns, so I think you can still win this. It's not easy. You gotta watch out for obviously back rank mate. You gotta watch out that white doesn't get some sort of fortress, like they just put their rooks together here and just kind of defend everything. It might be difficult for you to break through. You're gonna have to try to use the pawns to help you. So just a little thing, like when I'm playing a position like this, I don't like leaving my back rank like this like where i can get mated so i would play like g6 here just just play it like just i mean i guess it's not a blitz game but especially in speed chess you have to like cover your back rank. you can't just leave that there there you go all right cool i feel much better already that's fine yeah this is a hard position to play for, for the queen you, you have to get a pass pawn which i think you're doing the right thing you're trying to make a pass pawn you can get a pass pawn and then sort of push it that's how you're going to potentially win okay so you got some pawns is there a way almost looks like you should be able to win a rook but i guess not Like, I feel like right here, maybe you can push that. Start pushing. At some point, you have to push your pawns, right? You're not going to be able to win just with queen checks. So you got to kind of decide. There you go. And then just keep pushing that pawn. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. So that, that was pretty good. I think the end game was nice. That middle game... You know, we, we kind of already talked about it. Work on your tactics and stuff. But overall, nice game. Okay. Let's see. Who was I doing next? Frosty. There we go. Frosty. Forgot. Frosty. Where did it go? I had it. Had it and I lost it. Oh, there it is. I got it. Okay. Frosty. Here we go. You are okay. You are black. So let me flip this. Here we go. All right. Frosty's black. Okay, queen d6. I don't know if you know these lines or not. This is, I would say this is one of the more tricky versions of 
the Scandinavian, I think it's maybe a little bit easier to go to A5. Because if you go to A5, your plan is like really simple. You play C6, Knight F6, E6. Your queen can jump back here. Put your knight there. Put your bishop there. Castle. I mean, pretty straightforward. Queen D6. You got to be careful because your queen can be like harassed by you know pieces in more ways uh so you know if you know this that's fine but just make sure you know what you're doing if you're gonna go with, with queen d6 um why is it why did it change the color of the board that's kind of weird anyway so queen d6 knight c6 okay good you're developing i like that d6 Personally, I think it's good to get your bishop out of the pawn chain first. Because otherwise, it's like, what are you going to do with this bishop? Yeah, you can go to d7, but that's not an awesome square for it. I like f5. This is a nice diagonal. And then you can play e6 if you want. But also, if your opponent is going to let you get more space, I would say play e5. That's an even better option. Because then you're pushing this pawn. You're getting control of the d4 square. You don't have to worry about a bishop ever coming here and harassing your queen because your your pawn is controlling it. And you don't block this bishop so it can come out whenever it needs to. So I really like e5. You know, sometimes you can't do that. Like if white already had a pawn here, it's you have to think more carefully. But in this case, I would say just, just play e5. Yeah, you can do this. Um, it's just... It takes you like two moves to develop the bishop as opposed to one move. And so, you know, if you spend two moves to develop like all your pieces, it actually takes you longer than if you just get them out as fast as possible. So that's just something to think about. All right, so you're attacking on the king side. That's fine. Oh, wow. Okay. I like, I like the idea. I don't know if it works because this bishop is here, but I, I like what you're thinking. You're setting up a checkmate. You've got your bishop lined up to get rid of the defender of the checkmate, and you're leaving this, this is a fishing pole trap. So, yeah, I mean, I like it. Now, you don't have to be careful, like, let's, let's see what happened in the game. Yeah, does it actually work? Yeah, see, that's the move I was afraid of. So yeah, one of, one of the things, when you're setting up these sort of traps, these checkmate traps, you have to kind of make sure that your queen isn't going to get dislodged. Because if it does, your threat disappears, right? And you, you just don't have anything. So, and that's what's happening here with bishop f4. It's it's just um, going to kick your queen away. Okay, e5. Knight comes in. Good move. Good move. Yeah, you're coming over here to set up. I like it. That's, that's smart. Nice. You saw that. Very good. Yeah. I mean, you're playing well. You're playing very well. Wow. That's a, I think that's a really good move, too. Going for the mate. like it. Oh, and you won. Cool. Nice game, Frosty. Very nice game. next sea cheese sea cheese around here I don't see it I don't see sea cheese's game I don't know why all right um What next? Did I miss any any channel members or patrons?
All right, let me do this. Let me do like a few more speed speed analysis games here. Uh, who has been waiting for over an hour? Somebody just said they were waiting for over an hour. Let's do Jax. Let's do Jax. Plastered Walrus. Okay. Plastered Walrus. Here we go. Plastered Walrus is 1500. We're going to go quickly. Oh, you're playing in 1900? How'd you manage to play in 1900? Okay, I'm not... I'm not really super familiar with this, so I don't know how much help I'm going to be in the opening. Um, let me actually turn on the engine for this one, too, because I don't know this lines, these lines very well. Like, when I see a position like this, my brain is just always like, can I sack the bishop and play 9g5 and e6 and something and just win the game it looks like it doesn't work but this is the stuff that i would definitely think through a little bit because it just looks really dangerous right it looks real dangerous no stockfish says there's nothing there what happens after this though queen b6 hmm. and black just has too much much counterplay with all these pieces it's just not worth it okay all right i just was looking so let's see bishop b3 okay b5 castles all right so we have a relatively equal position you save the bishop i like that okay rook c1 i like that G3. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. This looks good. You're sort of infiltrating Black Kent Castle. I mean, it's not that it kind of looks like the French, actually. It kind of looks like we're playing the French. Yeah, we did forget about that pawn. So, I mean, honestly, you guys, like, let me just tell you, if this if this is my game and I'm trying to learn from this. I'm going to just go through it quickly, like I'm doing right now, and I'm going to just watch Stockfish. And whenever I get to a moment like what we just happened, like right here, I'm going to make sure I understand what was so good for me. So like Stockfish is saying here, plus six. So if I can understand why Stockfish is saying plus six, that's going to be really beneficial to me improving from 15 to 16, 17, 1800, right? You need to be able to tell me what, why, like, if you look at this position, why is this so good? And like right now, I'm not sure that I, I know that. Um, it looks like because we're breaking through and, and black can't castle, I guess. And so like, when I look at the top moves, queen F4, queen F3, queen G4, I'm, I'm seeing like two moves here where the queen is just lined up on this this right so i think queen of three makes sense and then here right another moment where it's like i need to understand and you did in, in the game it looks like you, you you got it you played the the right move okay yeah and the knight comes in and blacks toast so i think you played this really well i don't really see too many problems yeah nice game i mean played well i don't i don't really see too much wrong with that who else who else do we have
Rajesh has been waiting since the start. Um, okay. Here's Cheesy Pickles game. We'll do Cheesy Pickles. And, um... That's not the right link. Sorry, guys. One second. Cheesy Pickles is black. So let's flip the board. Let me go over to this one. And why is it not on? There we go. All right, here we go. Let's see what happened. Wow. Wow. Oh. Okay. Okay. If you ever, if you ever see your opponent play these moves so early, you have to, you have to try to take advantage of that somehow. So you gotta play this move. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If your opponent plays some crazy moves like this on the side with these pawns, can I take advantage of this diagonal and how? In this case, bring the queen there. You're already completely winning the game, just like that. What's, what's white gonna do? You have to come here. Now your knight comes in. It's over. White's done for. Okay, so. Keep that in mind. Uh, generally speaking, this is fine. Developing is good. You do want to develop, but if your opponent makes moves like this, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of the diagonal. Okay, but overall, playing very well, developing your pieces. Okay, this is fine. Thanks, Val, for the super chat. Hog is here. Yes, I will do that one next. All right, so you took their queen. Awesome. Saved your rook. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay. Um, I don't know why you didn't just take this, but if there's a free piece, you should probably just take it. And you would have also not lost your bishop. So just try to, you know, take those free pieces when you can. Okay. Um... This is fine because you're going to get your queen out, but then you didn't do that. You brought your knight. So I'm not sure what the idea was. Um, but I mean, knight before is a good move. You got some nice it's happening here. Oh, this is a bullet game. That explains a lot. That explains a lot. This is a bullet game. All right. I'm going to just. Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize it was a bullet game. All right, let's go Tog is here. Tog is here. Is that your name that you sent me the game? Was it on chess.com or Leech Us? Where, where was it at? Email. Game is guess the elo, yeah, basically. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, I'm just waiting for uh, Tog's name. I don't see it unless I'm missing it. Oh, there it is. I see it, I see it, I see it. Sorry, guys. Uh, Tog, did you want your first game or second game? Just tell me the tell me the first or second game. There's two of them. All right, I'm gonna just check the uh, second one, I guess. Uh, the second one. All right, cool. Second one. Second one it is. All right, Tog is here. Let's go. Okay. You played F6. Um... Oh my. Was wait, was this a serious question or what was this? Yes, this is right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on the opening. We'll just get past the opening then. All right. So after some shenanigans, we reach a relatively normal position. Wow, thank you, Val. Love your content, thank you for posting. Love your chess puzzles. Even if they show me just how little I understand. Hope everyone here had a great day. Thanks, appreciate it, buddy. So, we reached a relatively normal position. Wow, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Pretty crazy. Yeah, C6 looks like a good move. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Attack on the king side. Does that work? Queen takes, rook takes. Uh, you throw in the check. So this was a good move. And then you throw in this, and then you take... Okay, so white had that idea, but all right. So we end up with rook against knight and bishop. Interesting. Okay. I mean, technically this should be probably better for the knight and bishop, 3-6. Three six seven, but Black's King is better, and the extra pawn. It's probably pretty, pretty equal. Now, now Black's better. There's just too many pawns. This is <laughs> it's quite the pawn chain. Quite the pawn chain. Wow, wow. Yep. All right. Cool. Nice, nice game, I guess. <laughs> Although, I don't recommend playing the move F6. I don't recommend this at all to everyone else who's watching. Please don't do that. It's called the uh, the fried fox defense. I did make a video on it. It's one of the ad openings. <laughs> okay. Did I miss anyone else? Are you guys okay if I just play a couple games? <laughs> I, I still have like probably 20 games, if not more, that I haven't analyzed. But it's, um, yeah, I'm just getting a little tired thinking about just playing a few games.
All right, so Cade asked a couple times. I'll, I'll do Cade's, and then I'll, I'll play some games. How's that sound? I'll do this one, and then I'll just play some games. All right, well, we'll just go quickly through. Oh, it's a 73 move game. Yeah, we'll go real quickly through this one. All right, Cade is white. Mainline Sicilian. Did we lose a piece? Did we just did we just hang a piece? Am I missing something? How did we how did we do that? And we kept playing. Interesting. Oh, the queen's trapped. Oh, wow. Okay. What is going on? <laughs> wow. Kate said he was waiting since the beginning, but if you want to play up to you, I'd like to see Kate. <laughs> hey, Val, if you're going to keep super chatting $20, I will keep analyzing people's games. How about that? Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, so I don't know what happened here. Uh, White obviously did something wrong and blundered the knight. But they kept playing, kept playing good moves. And then somehow, Black missed this idea. And now the queen is actually trapped. So that is kind of interesting. How powerful as the queen is, you know, everything's just covered. So, okay completely winning after all that so here we go okay trading is good if you're ahead material you should be trading looks like white shouldn't have too much trouble although black kind of has a little bit of a fortress Oh, wait a second, wait a second. That's a blunder. That's a big blunder. White didn't see it. So now we get Queen, Rook, and Bishop. Yeah, this game is weird. I feel like... I feel like Black is not playing like a 2100. Like, this is a, kind of an obvious mistake, I think. But, alright, anyway. So, the queen is probably just going to slowly pick off all the pieces, yep. And then white wins, okay. Hm. Weird game, very weird game, but uh, yeah, all right. the opening Gotham chess. <laughs> what? Uh... Okay. Alright, I'm gonna play a couple games, I guess, now. Thank you, Val, for the, uh, the super chats. Be able to feed my kids now. Here we go. Let's play, um, let's play five minute games so I can think a little bit. Okay. Oh, I gotta go back to this one. Sorry. Here we go. Oh, he's playing the French. No, I don't want to play against the French. I'm gonna play Queen 2 just to be, just to be difficult. Yes, we have successfully, successfully steered the game into other waters is what I wanted. I just really don't like playing against the French. I don't know what it is. I just don't like it.
Hmm. Let's let's see if we can. I mean, I assume black might. Well, I don't know what black's gonna do. But if they castle, we can launch an attack over here. If not. What's the plan going to be? Because that's probably the most annoying thing Black could do. It would just be to develop like this and maybe even Castle Queenside could be annoying. I guess this is going to... Oh, Night G4. That's what they were thinking about. Seems like a weird move. Seems like a really weird move. What? Does that work? Okay, I guess maybe it does. No, oh, but wait a second, wait a second. And Val with the $50 super chat. Right when I'm trying to calculate some important lines. What timing? What timing? All right, I'm going to have to just go for it. I'm just going to have to go for it and see what happens. I, he's, he wants to go here and then fork me. But I think I can play King D2. So there's no fork. And then I can do something else. I just don't know what that something else is. Content got me into chess again. Last time I played was seventh grade, so really appreciate you. Good luck on the games. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. I don't know, but thank you. Um see, like, can I go here and pin it and save my rook? Or actually, can I just go here and move my rook? Is that even easier? Keep my peace. Let's say I pin it. What's the point? What's the point? I'm losing my knight. There's no point. I gotta go here. I gotta go here. Oh, there's that move. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, 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 here. I'm losing my rook. So I have to go here. I'm still gonna lose this rook, but I can probably can I trap that knight? If my king goes out here? Oh my. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If only there was a way to save that rook. Okay, let's do this and we'll just try to trap the knight. So I can play g4 and the knight won't be able to leave and then I can maybe take it let's let's try that I gotta play g4 because if I go here the knight's gonna actually is the knight gonna escape king g3 here no, but I have to go check king here, here, king here, here. Maybe it's not escaping, so maybe I can play this. But is that better than g4? I gotta just move. I gotta just move. Yeah, I'm not able to trap it, am I? Man. That's too bad. I'm gonna lose this game. I didn't see that idea at all. That was a nice idea. I blame Val. They distracted me. They distracted me with the super chat.
resign is the top engine move here. Thank you. Thank you for that. Watch my clock. Yeah, I I had to send a text and I uh, was thinking that I might have lost on time when I came back up, but uh, I'm not really sure. I think Black's just totally winning after just taking in like G6 and I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not really sure what they're thinking about. Okay, night there. I mean, I guess I'm still trying to trap the night, but it's just gonna go here, so I don't know. Do this? No, because night here. Let's go here first. Val really wants me to lose this game. I can see that. I can see that. 19 seconds. Did I do it, guys? Did I trap the knight? Finally? Now that I have no time left on my clock, I trapped it. Oh, he's gonna go for this. Okay. Let's take this pawn. Nope. Just wait, Val. Wait for the game before you super chat again. Oh, boy. Too many bishops and rooks attacking me. I don't like it. I don't like it. No. Not good. Not good. Not good at all. <sighs> Val. Thank you. But I'm gonna blame you for that one. If I would have had eight more seconds, probably could have won that game. That was a really good idea, though. I mean, I, I didn't even, like, think about that idea. What, what was it? He intentionally went here to bait me to play h3 so that they could play knight to d4. How does that check out with Stockfish? That's my question. Let's see, uh, best move, 
No, it didn't work. So I did have something. It didn't work. Knight takes d4, that's what I did. Queen h4 check. King d2, that's what I did. Knight f2. Oh, rook g1. Rook g1 because after this I play g3 and then I take the knight back. Stockfish is so clever. See, I thought I had to move the knight, but I didn't. I could allow him to take play g3. What I did instead was this. And yeah, I totally missed that, that f4 was hanging. That, that was my problem. I didn't see that. But wait a minute. So on rook g1, what happens on queen f4? Ah, because now there's no there's no rook for the knight to take. So you can just... Yeah, they take you, you take them, you still keep your piece. So the sacrifice didn't work, but I didn't refute it properly. All right. It was the long con, but I was the opponent. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> That's one way to win, to win your uh, chess games. All right, let's see. Ooh, I want to play. I want to play a gambit. D three, and if they take, you play Bishop G five, and if they don't take. I, I've got nothing. I don't know anything now. That was it. I had one one plan. All right, I guess we're just doing something else now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that a free pawn? I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. And even though there's a fork, right? You can always just come back with your knight. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, so now they're just turning it into a gambit. Which is fine. I think we're okay. Let's get out of the center. And now I think just like trading some pieces would be smart. And go into an endgame of a pawn. So yeah, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna take it. And I'm gonna trade. I'm gonna trade everything. Does this work? No, because it can take here first. But what I can do is try to trade some more pieces. Because the more we trade, the closer I get to my winning king and pawn endgame because of my extra... Yeah, see, they don't want to trade. But now, at least, I can get this nice square. Although, the five at some point. I could also put my bishop there. F4... A lot of good options. C3 to stop this, but then that's weak. Alright, let's try this. Let's try this. I just have to watch out for F5. But I think I think it might be okay. I do want to stop the knight from coming in, and it gives my queen some more options. This, I'll just have to deal with that. Let's get the queen out there, we can bring this, maybe do something like this with the rooks.
Let's play b4 and try to get an outpost on c5 for the knight. Yeah, that looks like a good square. Because it defends my pawn, it blocks off this file, yep, from the rook. And now I can do something like this and start to maybe be more aggressive. Okay, good move, I guess. All right, I think we need to defend this pawn. Let's do it with this rook. Maybe this one goes here. I can just think about pushing these at some point. Is d4 an option? I'm trying to like get rid of my weaknesses and it's kind of weak, you know, a weak pawn. And so maybe if we trade this off, it's not so weak, maybe. It could still be weak actually. That's a big threat. That's also a possibility. That's a good move. Pretty good move. This is what I'm most worried about. Actually, I could do it this way. Yeah, let's do this. But I wanted to move that rook anyway, so. Now this is probably gonna happen. And I'm gonna play bishop f3. I think. Bishop f1. I could play bishop f. Nah, bishop f3 looks better, right? Let's see. I could do this. So if I take this way, I'm losing this pawn. Yeah, so let's do this. I have to be really careful in positions like this where there's lots of things lined up. This knight can move like anywhere, and then there's an attack here, and. Lots of tactics can like pop up, but it looks like I'm okay in this case. Yeah, see, they're not wanting to trade everything because I'm still up my pawn, so that's good. Gotta be careful for back rank mates. Definitely need to be careful. sure sometimes when i don't know what to do i'll just play a move like that so at least i don't have to get mated yeah, i really don't know what to do here let's see okay i don't want to lose on time So there's like, now there's like mate threats. So I gotta be really careful. Um, let's see. I don't think it works. I don't think it works. No, it does. He's gonna take here first. Oh man. All right. How do I fix this problem? That was bad. That was a bad move, guys. I'm just losing. I just lost. I just lost.
Well, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Maybe I can make a fortress. Let's see. But now with 12 seconds. It's unlikely. It is unlikely. Too bad. Yeah, I might start doing more streaming uh, going forward, especially if, especially if um, Val's going to be around any longer. But no, I um. Heard. Hey, thank you, TK. Appreciate that. I've heard that Twitch is kind of having some problems, and so a lot of the uh, streaming might start coming over to YouTube. So, could be a good opportunity. We'll see. It's a little bit harder just because. I don't always have like good quiet time but maybe i can just not worry about it let my kids scream in the background it'd be fine let's see what do we do here could i go take that bishop now no let's not worry about it Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's up on Twitch? Uh, I've just heard that they've been making a lot of decisions that don't really benefit the streamers. And so, if YouTube keeps upping their streaming stuff. I mean, I can see a lot of people leaving, coming over here. I thought I could fork this, but I guess I can't because of the pin. It's too bad, because it's close. But I can at least force him to trade. He has to trade now. Because if they go here, yeah, I was gonna win a piece. So, all right, at least we got that. The question is, which way do I take it? Probably with the knight. Your own are screaming too. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two. It's too bad. Let's see, does it takes takes Hmm. No, I guess there's not anything I can do there. All right. Maybe I'll go with like Queen c7, puts bishop somewhere, and then just try to do like a kingside attack, move the knight, play f5. It could be something like that, makes sense. I 
interesting. Yeah, I guess that doesn't change my plan. Maybe I'll just go here to go ahead and enforce this. Probably E4 is going to happen. And then I think the center's pretty well locked up. I can just come over here and start attacking. I'm guess, guessing this is what's happening next. And then, yeah, I'm going to go with this move. That's a nice hole. F5 looks good at some point not maybe not right away okay let's get that knight there let's get the bishop here yeah let's uh let's see do i get the bishop here or do i go for this now let's take the bishop here i know it's a bad bishop but i'm gonna probably be opening things up really soon so I think these bishops are going to become very good. Generally speaking, you don't want to close up the position. But in this case, I don't really want to let white do this. So I'm going to make an exception to the rule here. Even though I have the bishops, I think I can open it up enough right here that they can be effective. And now I don't have to worry about this. But now I will try to open up some things here. So that this bishop can get involved. Then we can get the rooks involved. Okay, that's fine. Maybe I can go like this and attack this way. Or this. Question is, how worried am I about this pawn? How worried? 
the MI. I guess I have to do this. That's really unfortunate. My bishop just didn't uh, ever get into the picture. That's the problem. I mean, that was not a good game, but I'll take it. Purple Sun, thanks. Yeah, I mean, even like here, I, I was just moving my queen <laughs> where it could have been captured. Eesh. What's up, Yanni? Yeah, you'll have to watch the, uh, the replay. All right, I'm gonna play one more game. I call it a night. I gotta sleep. Let's try to let's try to get like a a decent win. Here we go. Twenty four hundred. Let's get some points. Let's go with the. Go with the what is this? What is this called? I really like this F5 move. I've had some good, some good success playing this. And then you just kind of be aggressive on the king side and just kind of black's position is pretty cramped. Normally you would want to break in d5, but they can't really do that. Okay, interesting move. Maybe I can't do that yet. Let's do this first. Because if takes I think I can go Queen H5 I guess we're about to find out guess we are about to find out aren't we oh interesting don't want to take it, okay? Hmm.
Maybe I'll take with the rook, because I want my queen on this diagonal, I think, to defend the knight. Or I do something like this. This knight has got to go. This knight here is really strong. What? Val, good night. Thank you for the uh, super chats. You made the stream worth my while. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Is this a good move? Is this a good move? Yeah. Force a little trade? Okay. This has got to be a good endgame for me, right? Now the question is, do I activate the king? Or do I take this way? I think I want the king to start taking some stuff. Yeah. Do it. Looks pretty good, guys. Looks pretty good. See if I can not blow it. So I gotta defend that for sure, but now I think I'm in good shape winning this pawn. Yeah, I think we I think we got this. Unless I blunder something huge. Oh, that's a move, isn't it? Wait a second, wait a second. Does this just win on the spot? If the rook moves this way, I take this guy. If it moves this way, I get a queen. That's a rook.
So I think what I'm going to do is just sacrifice my rook over here if I have to and just go into the uh, winning king and pawn endgame. Like this. Good one to end on. Hope you guys had fun. Thanks for being here. I will, um, we'll see about trying to do this more often. Sounds like most people won't care if I'm uh, screaming and there's kids screaming in the background. Yeah, have a good night, Robert. For everybody who didn't get to see their games analyzed, I apologize. I know I missed quite a few people, but um, hopefully you still learned something. Order more frequent streams. That's a good idea, too. Thanks, TK. God bless you, too. Yanni's messages keeps getting deleted. What did you say? You just finished watching Doctor Strange. I saw that one. Guys.